ever since this Doki Bird controversy, r slash Niji Sanji has been ablaze with the latest news and leaks. And I've spent some time going over the past 20 or so hours of content and I've found some interesting things that people have posted that I want to share with you today. So the oldest post I found on here, not referencing something I think that has already been widely covered, is that an artist was warned slash threatened by any color over unfounded rumors that she leaked confidential information. According to the document, any color states that they had heard from a third party she leaked confidential information that violates their contract. She denies everything. The third party who told any color is CEO of Unicreate as seen in these images. She says that Unicreate refused to pay her for her work and she had to get a lawyer to finally get them to pay. And it was right after she received this document from Any Color. And apparently this CEO already has a bad reputation and Any Color believed them without checking with the artist first. The artist got advised by people to consult a lawyer and then deleted the original tweet. This all happened yesterday. This morning she tweeted again that Any Color staff with a liar's badge use CEO signature seal, which is often used in JP business, without his permission. I assume any color gave her a reply after she consulted a lawyer. She tweeted that this is illegal and expressed her surprise and disappointment that the company employs such a person. She also said she feels sorry for the CEO because he probably didn't know about it. Please see the links below for her tweets attached with translation. Again, here she is talking about using the seal without permission. There's another tweet where she says, I know there are better companies out there and I don't like companies that cause trouble to people. And this one where she says, is it okay for the legal department to do that? Do you have a lawyer badge? Just thinking about it made me feel sorry for the president as he probably doesn't know anything about it. Please continue to do your best in managing your company. I started to worry about the structure of this industry. Please don't do the same to others. That's it for the story. They have translations of other screenshots that do basically corroborate what they said. Such as this post right here that says that uh, they haven't paid her fees and she had to go to the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Office to finally get them to pay. The next topic is about Ghost Data. Now, if you'll remember, Ghost Data produced a song for Niji Sanji and although they didn't have the rights to the vocals, they said that next year they planned on reducing on releasing the background music for that track. However, apparently proceeds to take their music rights away. So previously, this is what we understood to be the story. The fact that uh, on February 6, 2025, they will be able to talk about their contract and the song they made for Niji Sanji and how they refuse to let them release it. It's also when the stupid ass contract is up, so that song will be free game for me to release on my own without the vocals. However, they have recently posted this. So I just got off the phone with my lawyer about the Niji Sanji contract. They officially, in perpetuity, forever own that song, period. Any color, I hope you burn. And honestly, how am I supposed to have any opinion other than total and complete agreement here? Fuck Niji Sanji. How did they own in perpetuity a song that they're never even going to release? As someone who has watched multiple Hollywood and other large budget media projects get thrown directly into the trash as little more than a tax write-off, I'm personally already pissed about all these other canceled projects. I'm still pissed about the Batgirl movie that I never got to see. I thought the movie looked hype and it's just, and it was in post-production and it'll never be released. I'm so tired of cool projects being canceled. I know this isn't related, but I had to rant somewhere. Now, most of the focus on this back and forth and this see over Doki Bird slash Selen Tatsuki. Now, even though the overwhelming majority of focus on the whole Selen Tatsuki slash Doki Bird situation has been in the EN sphere because that's where myself and my community occupy. It's pretty rare for JP News to enter the EN VTuber News face. However, apparently the Japanese are taking notice of Niji Sanji's contract leak. And although I have no idea what any of these videos say because I don't speak the language, the fact that we're getting cross-cultural pollination across language barriers and even the JP side is making videos on this is just one more domino in a very long string of dominoes that's falling as the news about Niji Sanji just spreads everywhere to every community. Which goes to show that Mr. Yacht himself saying he's gonna rethink how our communication in English is done isn't gonna help because now even the JP fan base doesn't like you. But in absolutely hype news, Quinn Bennett, formerly Kyo Kaneko, has released a trailer for his VTuber debut and I'm just gonna show the debut trailer because I don't care if anyone in my fan base 
gives a shit about this, I am super hype about it. So yeah, I'm fucking excited. Like I know we're literally only seeing a silhouette, but the intro video looks to be pretty high production value, which means the model is almost definitely gonna look pretty sick. It's always fun to see these absolutely explosive debuts where we've already got hype, we've already got a big fan base, we're already starting with the highest possible quality of model. you love to see it. And even though I did a live stream covering basically everything in that recent Niji Sanji employment contract, I feel like this person summarized the entire contract extremely succinctly. You're an indie, but we take your money. And yep, that is exactly what, what it says. They say repeatedly that they don't owe you jack shit and they're taking all your money. Even more Redditors have seen this uh, Japanese YouTube video discussing the Niji Sanji contract. And again, I've got no idea what it says, but apparently it's already got over 6K views in an hour. So the word is spreading and there's nothing Niji Sanji can do about it. Uh, daily reminder that Uki is a racist day six. Now, as I'm sure all of you are aware, Uki Violetta got in trouble for constantly bashing white people. It started off as mostly just jokes, which I normally don't have an issue with, but the jokes kind of stopped being jokes and he started to just get bitter and angry and resentful towards white people. And it became relatively clear that he almost certainly just hated white people. So apparently they got a compilation linked here. Now this video is like five minutes long, but I'll still include a link to the supercut in the description down below if you want to watch it. And you really can't talk about this recent Niji Sanji drama without bringing up the content creator legal mindset, the actual lawyer who's been reviewing all the legal stuff from this Doki Bird controversy. And this poster says legal mindset made an interesting point. He said during the contract analysis that if Niji Saji sues anyone outside of Japan, it bring massive attention to themselves and it will become a massive PRL for them. I thought that he had a very valid point. Niji Sanji cannot afford to sue any livers who are not in Japan, which is perhaps why they want them to relocate to Japan. Which, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Niji Sanji does pressure their talents to move to Japan. And I never even thought that being able to hold them legally liable might be a motivation for that. I just kind of assumed it was convenience because sometimes the talents have to make their way over to the uh, JP Niji Sanji offices. One thing I've noticed about the Niji Sanji subreddit as of late is that the moderators just can't keep on top of the massive influx of posts that have shown up on their subreddit. As we see in this post, looks like the mods woke up again. Weird how this is what struck a nerve. And they reference how the mods deleted a post where they say that Tomato, aka Doki Bird, aka Selen Tatsuki, got invited to EA's Apex Legends Nessie Cup. Obviously, they're just deleting this post because they're sick and tired of the Doki Bird controversy. And I find it funny that even though they're trying to delete some of these Doki related posts, you have posts like this one from 12 hours ago that are still up because apparently the moderators just can't stay on top of this massive tidal wave of posts. This next post that I want to review is saying, mark your calendars. Any color will release their next financial results statement on March 14th. These results and the reactions to them will almost certainly affect their decisions going forward. This will probably be their quote, judgment day. And they show the absolutely massive pitfall in Niji Sanji's stock price. And then they show this spike where apparently Niji Sanji spent $16 million to buy back their stocks and boost their stock price. And that's that little spike you see after the drop only for Selen's termination to bring it back down again. People are pissed and the stockholders are gonna come for their fucking throats. Because here the th here's the thing, this is, wor this is genuinely worth mentioning. Normally stock buybacks work as a way to raise the stock value. And the reason you want to raise the value of your stocks is to make your shareholders happy because your majority shareholders sit on the board that determines who the CEO gets to be and they get to influence company decisions. So if the CEO drops the share price and shareholders lose value on the shares that they own, they can vote out the CEO. Then we have this post saying, daily reminders to subscribe to Sayu and get her to 100K. Let's see where she's at right now. Look at that, 
Sayu is at 91,000 subscribers, almost to 100,000. And yeah, absolutely, let's get her back to 100K. And if we take a look at her Twitch, her Twitch has also already surpassed 100,000 followers. People are really counting down the numbers as they're waiting for Sayu's YouTube to breach 100K. Now, I have no idea who PDR-san is, but apparently this is one of the YouTube comments under a video discussing the Doki Bird controversy, where they say, I can't feel the love for the members. I'm sorry to say this, but she was treated like a prostitute who could be cut off if she caused a problem. Hollow's president loves him like his own daughter, and the manager is also closely involved with the members, and they trust each other. You can watch it with peace of mind because you can see that. Even Hollow has lost important members due to information leaks and failures in expanding overseas. Now, it goes without saying that there is almost certainly drama in every single company. And there are things that we, the audience, simply don't have access to and do not see. However, it's hard not to notice that even with a cursory search of Yagu, he gets nothing but love from his talents and his community. It could be all... it could be bias, it could be hype, it could be false advertising, but it's hard not to get wrapped up in the idea that while the AnyColor CEO is a absolute weasel, Yagu actually loves his talents and loves what he does. And you can see in the way that the talents talk about him that they appreciate him too. I've never seen a Niji Sanji talent write the phrase, I also got to hug him twice. <laughs> I totally fanboyed. Ever. I've never seen that happen. And I've been doing VTuber news for a long time, y'all. I've never seen a Niji talent make a post like this. Ever. So, it could be cope, it could be propaganda, I don't know, I could be wrong, but my gut tells me that there's real love at this company, and that's what's missing from Niji Sanji. Now, as JP people are covering the Niji Sanji situation for the JP audience, you're getting a lot of really interesting YouTube comments that I'll read for you now. I don't know if this contract is true, but it seems perfectly consistent with the story that Niji Sanji will take the rights, even if you make your own music, only 50% of the share of Spacha is reasonable and reasonable in this industry. I feel like there's a little bit of Google Translate wonkiness in the message, but the intent is clear. Another comment saying, the super chats and the cost of purchasing personal items and materials around the beginning is okay, but the inequality of penalties and the fact that when a problem occurs, the livers deal with it and the management doesn't get involved, what does it mean that they only cut out the middleman and don't protect the livers? Yeah, exactly. Everything is the liver's responsibility and they're penalized if things don't work out. That's not fair. They're basically indies with a gun to their head. This is a particularly interesting comment that says, the country started with unequal treaties, but the Japanese should also get into the habit of going to court and think individually about the laws concerning contracts. We should at least pretend to be a nation governed by the rule of law, not by the law of the jungle, which God, Damn! God damn! For anyone not aware, that's a callback all the way to 1854, when the United States forced Japan to open trading ports that they did not want to open. It was an unequal treaty that exploited Japan. To compare Niji Sanji to the exploitation and abuse that founded the country's international relationships is such a deep cut. Holy shit. This post here, absolutely memeing on Vox for saying leaving is always an option when it absolutely fucking isn't on account of the contract being for two fucking years and if you terminate your contract, they still own everything and you still have to fulfill all of your deliverables. So yeah, absolutely five IQ take from Vox. Daily reminder that two talents almost died due to gross mismanagement by any color in all levels of the company. This particular post highlighting the situation with Alira Pandora, where they say, yes, if she left the company, she might lose her work visa. This we know, and it's really not a massive deal. The real issue the contract brought up is the fact that she is operating within Japan and the contract is enforceable. Sayu and Doki could easily win their court cases if they happen due to the protections in place in California and Canada. Alira has none of those protections as she has moved to Japan to do her activities. So yeah, if you see a talent capitulating to Niji Sanji, double check to see if they actually live in Japan. Cause while non-JP talents can relatively easily escape these contracts, JP 
talents absolutely cannot. This poster saying, I just connected that the reason some JP livers have been on hiatus for over a year is to avoid the termination penalty of their debut debt. Stuff like this is why the contract is most likely real. It fills in the gaps of the weird things we see. And yeah, this contract has put into context so many things that I didn't have the processing power to realize before, and people are connecting the dots. And it's so relieving to see. More people chiming in on why Vox's y'all can just leave take is absolute dog shit, where they highlight if a talent causes any damage to Niji Sanji due to a breach of this agreement or the individual agreement, the talent shall compensate Niji Sanji for all damages. Not so easy to leave now, huh? They have to pay back part of their income, give back their address, and compensate all damages. So yeah, that is just a fraction of some of the posts that I've been seeing on Niji Sanji lately that I felt like sharing. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Bye guys!